and welcome to another episode of Show Us Your Crits, the virtual tabletop show, and so much more. I don't know what that other more is, but uh, there, there's more to it somewhere. And we're here to actually conclude our Carbon 2185 campaign uh, interlinked. So this is one we've been waiting for. Uh, the, the party has been out hunting down and destroying property of the company we call Vindaloo because the name that they actually give in the module is almost nigh unpronounceable. But before we jump into a recap and uh, have everyone introduce their characters again, I just want to give a couple of, uh, put a couple of things out there. So first one, give us money. Well, actually support us on Patreon. Um, you know, uh, we definitely like doing this. We want to do more. Uh, we've been talking about doing other stuff, possible game reviews and other things on the show. So definitely support us. We have four subscribers. I will go ahead and give them a shout out in a second. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, YouTube, we're near 200 subscribers and uh, we want to make 200. And we've already put it out there that every 100 people we gain we'll definitely do something fun for them or a prize or we'll figure it out just get us to 200 we'll get us to a thousand and then we can monetize so that would be even better also you can like us on facebook um at the link down here uh this is where we stream to we we talk about things every once in a while we'll even do a movie night so check us out and i'd like to give a thank you to a few people um samiko salson who is actually our first uh subscriber to patreon so samiko thank you uh if you want to check out samiko's uh work uh she does uh animation she does cartooning and uh she also is an uh a great author um check them out uh next up i just want to basically thank uh, three of my closest friends you know it's kind of like your mom uh, subscribing to you on Patreon. I've known these guys so long. But um, thanks, thanks to Bryce, <laughs> th Bryce, John, and Mike, who are also part of our Deadlands game. Uh, and uh, that is about it. So let us get rid of these banners. There we go. When we can get back here. So let's go around the table and uh, introduce our characters. So we'll start with Matt. So first off, James, I just want to say how much I appreciate the intro, <laughs> the the '70s, uh, you know, the, the the whole thing. It's just awesome. <laughs> uh, so I am playing Dirk, a former private military uh, soldier uh, who was summarily dismissed after an injury. Uh, he has gone uh, street punk and. Uh, basically become a mercenary hiring out to whoever can pay him all right cyberpunk and mercenary works out quite well sometimes <laughs> well, you get yeah. paid in bullets man I've, i'm sure you have a case of nine millimeter that's... rounds now now that... oh yeah that's why i have so many uh so much ammo <laughs> all right yeah, they're and... soy bullets <laughs> they're soy bullets tasty yes. crunchy soy bullets all right mary tell us a little bit about who you're playing tonight I am playing Keela, a gutter punk scoundrel who used to run drugs for eh, just about anybody and who has given it up and trying to go straighter. But uh, yeah, that's probably really pretty thwarted. All right. Awesome. Mike, tell us about who you're playing tonight. I am playing Caitlin Shinjiro, a synthetic hacker who is railing against the system and trying to find out her uh, identity and how she fits into this uh, carbon 2185 world. And last but not least is Greg. I'm Dr. Dirty. I am the medic and I'll be glad to fix you as long as you got the cash. <laughs> awesome. All right. So where we left off is our our faithful cyberpunks have broke into the Vindaloo um, uh, the Vindaloo complex. 
Uh, so they were hired by Nightingale. Well, actually, that's all they know her by. There's no name attached. Night it's a Nightingale synth who was injured. Um, they were the the night the synth itself had an affair with someone who worked at the corporation. Um, something happened. There was an incident, and the Nightingale synth got completely wounded, almost trashed. Um, Willie, who is the person that was having that thing with uh, with the with the synth, uh, decided to kind of spirit her away uh, to Mister Tanaka, who is a I, I guess a techie of some sort to try to fix her. Um, and this is where our party comes in. So the main Vindaloo compound has been... Now, this is the compound that makes the synths. And also, to our players' knowledge, well, at least through rumor, now finding its truth, the synths are, all, are basically, when they're decommissioned, they're being turned into pet food and other products um, uh, harvesting the meat on the synths. So it, it's all around a no good thing. However, this Nightingale synth is also trying to basically start the civil, uh, uh, the synth liberation front. I can't even speak English tonight. Uh, in order to basically overthrow and free the synths. And that is what our cyberpunks are doing currently at the moment. Uh, they are, and I will go to our map here. So let us move ourselves to this view. Ah, what happened? Oh, there we go. We're moving to that view. He's so smart. <laughs> and <laughs> this is uh, this is not the map, but this is a very cute synth that works for Frisco's finest, a subsidiary of Vindaloo. All right, so let me go over here. All and soy, all the time. All soy, all the time. All right, let us go now to Map Orama. I believe this is where we are. All right, we never, so let's. We don't return to our regularly scheduled map already in progress. Yep. All right, so this is the path that you've managed to take at the Reclamation Center. Um, you got in. <laughs> Uh, you came in actually with a truck. Well, some of you did. Others of you, two of you, I think, snuck in, which was Keela and. Hi. Was it, and was it was it Dirk or what? Yeah, it was Dirk. Yep. And you guys yeah. snuck. You guys snuck in. Um, there was only one security guard in here, which I believe you dispatched. Yeah. Uh, you made your way through these doors, up these hallway, up this hallway, and into this room. And in here um, was actually the room where they put all the synths. And this room itself was like a horror show. There was synths hanging from hooks um, from the wall. Uh, there was synth body parts that are all going into this machine here that kind of look like a um, kind of a weird oven of sorts. And uh, there was a few guards in here. You managed to dispatch them and take care of them. And now you are pretty much held up. Uh, Billy, uh, Billy basically tells you that he is going to go and keep an eye out front uh, to let you know, you know, what's going on and radio you if the if the fuzz are coming. So Man. he exits the building. So this is where we are. Um, it is loud in here. I, did, I can't remember. Did you guys shut off the machine? No. 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 Yeah, okay. I think we, we left it on, but I do know that we put a bomb behind it. Or in oh, it. Oh, or... yes. You did. That That's one of our bombs. I'm guessing it's going to be the one that Billy had. Yeah. All right. Yes. Um, so you, pr you haven't really heard anything else um, come by. And remember, it is it is fairly late at night, so... Uh, if anyone was here, they're probably, well, they're probably like overnight shift or janitors or security. I'm going to come back out in the hall. Uh-huh. And this is a door? Yep, that is a door. I'm going to go listen at it. Okay. Um. There's actually, 
there's kind of a humming coming from the other side mm -hmm. and the door feels incredibly cool to you there's no there's no key or there's no handle however you see basically a biosecurity mechanism on the uh on the wall next to the door open sesame no it nope does nothing the door looks at you like a door <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go, this... what kind of biosensor is it like a hand an eyeball um it looks like it's um it's kind of weird it's it's it looks like an area for a hand but there's impressions on the fingertips like your fingertips would fit into these impressions i'm gonna go back in here uh-huh and does it matter did it look like it mattered right or left um as far what do you mean does it matter if it looks yeah. right or the sensor oh um it is it is on the left hand side so i'm going to chop off one of the guards hands need a uh, hand oh and yeah press it into the sensor all right um uh basically that it you hear kind of uh the equivalent of eh, as the fingers uh, go up to the door. But you can hear, as soon as you put the hand up there, you can hear kind of a mechanism where the fingertips would be. So you kind of think this is actually DNA triggered. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, is it something that uh, I think I could try and hack? Uh, possibly. I, you haven't looked it over yet. All right. I'll, uh, I'll head over there and, uh, take a look and see if this is, uh, I mean, bio, uh, uh stuff that requires bioelectric or bio stuff is hard, but I'll take a look and see if I can hack it. All right. Uh, go ahead and hook everything up and go ahead. Um, beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, 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 beep. All, right. All you need to do is not fuck up. Yeah. Silence. <laughs> um, I will roll my hacking. I get a 22. All Woo! right. That's actually a really good roll because you didn't want to get anything under 19. Um, <laughs> all right. So, yeah, it, the door, you hear it unlock. Okay. Uh, I will uh, take a step back and let one of the uh, meat shields go first. Is there a meat shield available? Matt. Calling all meat shields. Here. Calling sure. all meat shields. Hi. Hello. I'm right here. No. Be before Hello. we move into the next room, I just want to check one thing. In the oven room, there's there's none of the bodies in there are saveable, right? Um, uh, of the synths? Yeah. No, the, I mean, there's a few... There was a few that were twitching on the hooks, but like I said, it was a little kind of on the gruesome side. Okay. And they don't have any money in their pockets. Uh, no. Usually dead synths <laughs> aren't, aren't very well known for... I just meant Dr. Dirty's motto is that it'll heal you if you can pay him. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Do they have any gold fillings? Um, no, I'm, I'm kidding. Totally kidding. <laughs> Do they have real teeth? Would they get cavities? Probably not. <laughs> All okay. Right. Okay. Right. Onward. Take it away. It is unlocked. Yep. So, um, uh, I motion for Dirk to do the honors. I do the honors and prepare to get shot. All right. So Dirk's opening the door. I am. I right. am? Yes. No, I... <laughs> you are. All right. So you open the door and surprise, behind curtain number one is it looks like you found what you're looking for. The mainframe. <laughs> 
a new car. Uh, I turn around and I look at um, Caitlin and I say, this looks like it's your job. Okay, so Caitlin knows what to do, but Mike has totally forgotten why we're looking for the name frame again. Well, you're so uh, more of a recap. We'll just do that. Um, Wayne's World. <laughs> uh, uh. Um, you guys were supposed to stick explosives all over this building and blow it up, uh, especially the mainframe. Oh, right, 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 right. All of us have. After, after we get all the synths out. Some of which are waiting in that van down at the bottom. Right. Yep. Down and by then the river. you have no idea where the rest of them are. So. Well, there's so, another, there are more doors down here, guys. Yep. Well, so, just, yeah. I am going to approach the um, the core mainframe. I'm going to step into the room and approach the core mainframe. Where are we supposed to upload? Or did we already upload the virus? We already uploaded the virus. We already uploaded the virus. Okay. Yeah, that was oh, wow. in the previous adventure. So, um, is there like a room here? Because I, I was going to say, anything. is there anything over here? Or is it just a void? I'm pretty sure I'm stepping into the space time continuum, but I, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. Let me, uh, it is a void. Actually, it is the synth void. Yeah, because I just moved my guy in there and he just disappeared. <laughs> mm -hmm. Aha! There we are. Aha! It's a giant number nine. Yes, ooh, number nine. And there's a handy dandy thing for you to like. Um, oops, because I don't have a plus here. Um, you gotta watch out for the. It's hand Is that sanitizer. Sink? Ooh, that's good. It's free hand sanitizer. <laughs> it looks. This looks like a sink. Yeah. Are you, are you saying there's there's coronavirus twenty one eighty five? Because if that's true, I don't want to live on this planet anymore. <laughs> it's hand sanitizer, but it's a different kind. It like melts your hands. Oh, oh, that doesn't sound too bad. I guess <laughs> completely sanitized. What is this, James? Yeah. Uh, that's a sink. Okay. It's a heat sink. Oh. 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 I, I don't like the. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. Don't worry about me. Um, <laughs> which one of these large uh, squares do I want to uh, interface with? Is it the one that says number nine? Um, they're, they're all basically the same sort of server. You'll just want to plant your explosives. Uh, I would know. put it centrally. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to walk over here. Um James, I'm going to try and see if I can, if I hack into this uh, server, is that going to set off all the alarms if I screw it up? Um, maybe. <laughs> that, that's a yes. Uh, I say out loud to the party, should I hack into the system to see if there's anything useful or should I just plant the bomb? I would, um, what if we plant the bomb, plant our other bombs, and if we're not... Yet. We're gonna have to come back this way anyway. So. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, so then I'm just going to take out my block of C4. I'm going to plant it uh, centrally located there between the two servers. Uh, I'm gonna set the timer for what, guys? Thirty minutes? Forty-five minutes? It's, it's already set. Oh, it's already set. Okay, <laughs> then I will stick it to the uh, man right. and uh, push the arm button. <laughs> All right. You're about to go uh, militant in a minute. Yep. Does this, does this uh, door have a hand print? Uh, that door, actually, let me give me a second, and I can tell you exactly what that door does. It um, opens and closes. Hopefully. Uh, this door actually does have um, a lock on it. A lock on it. Um, it's a, it's not a bio lock, but definitely a secure um, keypad. Oh, keypad. So I will take my a keypad. You said right. Yep. I will. 
Yeah. I will look at it really disdainfully. It look at it intensely. And wait for someone else who has more skill in locksmithing than I do, because all I want to do is stab my knife into it. <laughs> the, the, the keypad stares back at you menacingly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Guys, there's another door over here if you're done playing with your uh, C4. Right. Okay. Um, so they're doing I that. Um, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to peek around the corner. All right. Give me a second. I'm doing this live. All right. Um, all it's right. So live. You're going to go around the corner, and what you see around that magical, magical corner... Is come on empty hallway. Come on empty hallway. Empty hallway. <laughs> Score oh. one for the good guys. With a couple of doors. Naturally. Now this is a door right here. Is, yep. is this a door right here below below it? Like the the one that's like two blocks down from it. Is that a door two right here where I'm yep. hanging? That is the door. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five more doors. Okay. Well, let's get this first. This door could theoretically lead into the same place. Theoretically. Now, while they're looking at that, does this door over here on the end, does that look like it's... What kind of lock does it have, if it has a lock? Um, it actually does it, it. It looks like it just has more of a sensor than anything else. Sensor. <laughs> kind of like a, a kind of like a, you know, like a when you go by it, that magnetic lock, it unlocks the uh, the door. As long as you have the proper credentials. Yeah, RFID lock. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, James. So whenever, uh, whenever you want me to, I will attempt to hack the door that I'm standing in front of. Go for it. All right. See if I can do two for two here. I just picture him with a big cyber axe hacking the door. Womp, womp. I got a thirteen. Wah 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 wah. I take my right. jam it into it. Right. Says access denied. Should I try again? And then she jams her dagger into it. All right. Um, Do you need roll, a dagger jamming roll? Ro, no, roll me to roll me it to hit. If you roll something fantastic, I'll say that you kind of burn out the system. And... <laughs> That's good. Wow. You, you probably more hurt your knife than the actual thing. The door pulls out a knife and stabs her back. <laughs> that wouldn't have happened if I'd used my katana. Um, should I try again, or should we continue with the brute force attack? Or we could just move on. Or we could move on. Let's try one more time, and then we'll just move on. Okie dokie. Here comes another hack and roll. Well, you're doing that. I'm going to go back and check those dead guards over in the meat locker room and see if they have any cards or anything. Oh, look. Even worse than a 13. I got a 10. <laughs> Yay. Right. So you're checking the meat guards, you said? Yeah, I'm checking the meat guards. Meat guards. <laughs> um, yeah, meat guards have what all meat guards carry in this world, apparently. Meat. Is, Please, is say those... nine millimeter. Please say 9 millimeter. No, those uh, all American guns. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but with and, nine, nine millimeter. Oh, wait a minute. They have those little electrical prod thingies. Yes, they did. Oh, I'm they did? I'm going to take one of those and see if I jam it into the lock, if I can short circuit it. Okay. See, now that's some thinking. You guys care if I try that? I don't sure, want to, like, well, break it. Um,. Mm, yeah, why not? <laughs> In the worst case scenario, we set the servers to blow and we run. What do you want me I to roll? Be counting down. 
What's that? Yeah, just give me a, a, a to hit roll. It doesn't have to be fancy. Melee, I'm going to roll like I'm... Here, I'll give you an attack roll and you could just... Yeah. Go with that. Oh, that's not 14. bad. Yeah. So yeah, you you hit it and it 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 breaks the glass. Well, the glass is already kind of a little bit broken from Keela's dagger, uh, and there's sparkles that not sparkles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a pony door. Uh, there's there's sparks. There's like little lightning charges, and the door goes. It opens. It's dark in there. Like, does it open like just cracks open or opens like a Star Trek door? It opens like a Star Trek door. Nice. It is dark. Or does it open like a heart of gold? Heart of gold. Uh, have a happy day, door. <laughs> no, no happy days in cyberpunk. Uh, it's more like Eeyore if Eeyore had a door. So what do you like? Hey there, Doctor Dirty. Oh. What's in the room? Oh, uh, let me check. I gotta see one thing. So what James, do you do? when it opens, it goes. Thanks for opening me. Yeah. yeah. So somebody's just gonna <laughs> may have opened me, but somebody's gonna have to close me again. James, what's in the room? Head oh. lamp. Head. Yeah, what the hell is like I said, lamp? it's it's pitch black. Oh. Do I have a flashlight? Oh, that's what it... Yeah, my headlamp is a flashlight. Okay, so I'll turn on my headlamp. All right, so you stand at the door and look around? Click, click. Uh, yes, I stand at the door and I look around. All right, so let me go ahead and show the room, and then I'll kind of tell you what happens. And what oh, you yay. see. That doesn't sound ominous, ominous at all. <laughs> So as you look around, your light hits this kind of metal man oh, yeah, that as that. soon as the light hits it, its red eyes go Close and door. It's, it's, it's like skeletal metal body starts moving. This appears to be some sort of jail. Terminator? Could you see a couple? Yeah, this is definitely like a T, an early T2. Um, Close the door. And yeah, there's, that's an option anymore. There's a couple of synths in there. And and basically in behind these like prison areas. Oh boy, close the door. Um, I, I don't think that's an option anymore. Oh this boy. Is, so we're gonna we're gonna do some fun initiative for everybody. Uh, so let me clear this first. Don't do anything yet. Remove all turns. Clear. Fun initiative for And we are ready to roll initiative. Now, James, out of game, I want to talk to you about that turn order pop-up you have. So okay. if I don't mention it to you, uh, please bring it up after game. All right. Uh, let's see. The initiative tracker. Yes. That's fine. Oh, which I need to roll right now. <laughs> that would be nice. Woo! I got an initiative hot diggity. Initiative hot diggity. All right. Looks like all our contestants are in. Don't. And, uh, <laughs> wow, dude, you're so slow. Robots go faster than you. <laughs> robots that are booting up Windows 95. I mean, come on. <laughs> well, you know, he's down all around the corner. So. That's he's true. And he's an XP bot. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so he XP bot. What does that mean? You get that. extra experience. Yeah, extra experience. Meant that he doesn't like leak oil anymore. <laughs> All right. Better, anyway. than, better than a, an ME bot. <laughs> yeah, I never had any problems with that. <laughs> All right. Caitlin. Oh, sorry. Keela. No. I was going to say, why am I going first? Because right. oh. you are loved. <laughs> Let's see. Neener, 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 neener. 
neater, neater, neater. I go push past uh, Dr. Dirty. Uh huh. Head up to Robot Face. Uh huh. And I stab him in the guts with my mono edged katana. Okie dokie. Gotcha. That will hit. And damage seven. Damage seven. All right. So let me just go ahead here and fit in some blanks. Um, the weapon. It, oh, actually, no. The weapon. Do, you're using a katana. The weapon actually does do um, full damage. Yes. <laughs> All right. So. Bitty, 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 bitty. So, uh, what is the Terminator holding for a weapon? Um, it has a chainsaw, a built in pistol, built your boots, in. your clothes, and your motorcycle. Yeah. yeah, all right. And now we go to Dirk. Dirk will move in on the other side. And I'm going to attempt to chop the hand off of the uh, the robot that has the gun. Ah, the old I'm gun going hand. To, I'm going to disarm him. Get it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've been spending too much time around me. <laughs> what I get? What I get? Oh, hey, wow. twenty-four. All right. It was it wasn't a crit, but um, thirteen points of damage. But it'll do thirteen points of damage. Absolutely. So you don't quite cut the arm off, but it uh, you're definitely messing him up, uh, <laughs> Doctor Dirty. I didn't even disable it. Oh, come on. Well, step in. Move over. Turn and fire. Fifteen hit. Uh, fifteen hit is correct. Uh, fifteen does hit. Okay, twelve damage. All right, it is its turn. And before you attack, because I know it's probably going to attack somebody. I am going to use distraction on it, so it has to roll for disadvantage against whoever it attacks. Okay. Um, it's probably going to attack you, because these guys are too close to shoot a pistol at. And actually... I mean, it would be disadvantage them either way. So he's rolling a disadvantage either way, but um, actually... Who did the most damage to him? That would be... Yeah. That would be Dirk. Yeah, so... He's going to, like, eat lead sucker. <laughs> and he gets a 13, which I'm assuming misses. Uh, actually, that is exactly what he needs. Oh, wow. All right. Don't forget he's rolling at disadvantage. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So, oops. So, yep, he would miss. Stop, Kat. All right, and Caitlin, top of the round. That's bottom of the round. Bottom no, of the round. Just trying to make her feel better. <laughs> All right. Um, so, I'm going to run into the room. Uh huh. Uh, what is my full move? 30 feet? Is that right? Yep. So, you can move six of these squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. Does that work? Uh, are you running through a wall? Um, I wanted to run up to the prisoner cells. Is there a wall that well, I'm missing? Yeah, you're. You just ran through a wall. You were here. Oh, I meant to run down the hallway. One, two, three. Okay. Four. Uh huh. Five. Six. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can move there. That's legit. That's legit. 
Okay, so uh, explain again these two prisoners, preferably the one that looks like she's dressed in red. Yeah, this one kind of looks like a Nightingale model um, streetwalker type. And okay. the other one looks to be, it's, it's also a woman, but more kind of a, a business looking type. Okay. So I run up to the cell and I say in my best uh, voice, come with me if you want to live. Now I know that <laughs> reference is probably 200 years old, but uh, I'm going to try and hack the jail door anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. She just looks at you and chews her gum because they always chew gum and uh, <laughs> says, nice. but the door's locked. <laughs> I love it. So, hacking to hack open the door, correct? Uh huh. How about an eleven? Nah. <laughs> I give her a, I give her a smile and I say, "This might take a minute." It's okay, sugar. And All right. I'm done. Top of the round, and I'm going to add a new initiative. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's always fun. Uh oh. Rut row. <laughs> All right, and this okay. Let me just do the. Doesn't look good. It's like a T one thousand. All right, we are now at uh, Kila. Dun da da dun da dun dun da dun da da dun da dun. Um. Kila. <laughs> I got I uh, katana size them again. All right. Ten damages. Ten damages. With my uh, katana. All right, you wound him. Wow, that was a delay. Yeah, wow. got a lot of hit points. All right, and that brings us to our new friend. Don't forget, since Dark's right next to him, you can sneak attack. Oh, yeah. Here, have some extra damage. Sorry, I didn't mean to interject. I just want to... Have an extra nine damage, James. An extra wow. nine damage? That's, yeah. a lot. That's a lot of damages. He's sparking it. Spar uh, spar uh, uh, he is sparking. <laughs> <laughs> and sputtering? Yeah, but he is not down yet. It looks like someone breathes on him funny, and uh, he's definitely a goner. All right. And that brings us to Dirk. Do your magic, Dirk. Um, magic not that I'm complaining, Dirk. but what happened to our new friend? We don't actually know if he exists yet. Yeah. Uh, we haven't, uh, we haven't seen the new friend Matt, yet? He's in the hallway. I see. I see where he is, but we don't see where he is. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Oh, I see him now. Okay. Well, probably Caitlin does because she can run through walls. But <laughs> yes. Twenty-one hit. That's Twenty-one enough. hits, and this guy is a dead Scrappy. robot. Yep. All right, we are out of initiative for well, not really, but I go over here and look at this one. Who are you, James? Let me know, and I can do another hacking roll. Um. Uh oh. This one looks like a two-arm gun hand robot. Yep. But this one just arrives here, and we're going to be back in combat. So, Caitlin, um, yeah, go ahead and head your tracking. Uh, your, I'm sorry, your hacking. Tracking? Yeah. All right. Yes, track those watch. All right. How about a 23? You pop both of them. Sweet. <laughs> Free at last. Yeah. She's just like, my hero. And uh, <laughs> I reached other... out. The other one's kind of tweaking um, to the point where, like, there looks like there might be a programming error in her because, like, her, her eyes just kind of tweak and her head just kind of moves funny. Oh, but, oh, um, oh, tweaking. No. I think she said twerking. <laughs> no, no. Did she leave the cell? Uh, they haven't really, le they're not leaving yet. Um, I don't, I'm not going to put initiative. Yeah, I mean, at this point, they can. 
Okay. Well, they kind of they kind of like it in there. It's it's roomy. Keila, it is your turn. Make Can me I... a perception roll, please. Perceptionalize. Oh. Well, I'll make a stealth roll for him. I mean, who knows? Maybe his stealth roll will completely suck. And uh, <laughs> actually, he doesn't have a stealth, so he just gets some. Um, so he sticks his head in and goes, what's all this then? Oh, man, he is quiet. He is like ninja. <laughs> he got oiled up. Yeah. <laughs> Grease me up, woman. <laughs> the noob. And it's his turn as he sprays into the room. Well, actually, unfortunately, this, this game has no cool spray rules. But he does get a multi-attack, so... He is probably going to, at this point, the only people he can really see is Dr. Dirty and Dirk. Woohoo! Yay! Come at me, big boy. Beedy, 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 beep. All right, Dr. Dirty. Why did I roll twice? I don't know. That was weird. So, do I. So, Dr. Dirty, does uh, I'll just take the first roll. 17 hit you? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Ow. 10 points. Wowzers. The hell is this guy using? Uh, he, he has basically these, like, um, auto guns on his arms. He awesome. has two guns. One yep. for each of you. Uh -huh. And Dirk. Yeah. Does 14 hit you. Yeah. Holy uh, smoke. Be afraid. Be wow. very afraid. Ah! Ouch! Oh! Holy! Jeebus! <laughs> Uh, Dirk, are you still like uh, alive? Vertical. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Still vertical. All right. Still vertical. All right, Dirk, and it's I'm your turn, off. and you guys know he's here. No, uh, no um, perception roll needed. Uh, was it the mini guns? Did, is that what gave it away? <laughs> yeah, the bullets tearing through my flesh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think there's somebody here. Eat I'm lead. not totally sure why. Eat lead. So it's good for you. It's good. For you. <laughs> so, uh, first things first. Second wind. I get D10 plus one hit point regained. Okay, and I believe that's a bonus action. So, five. That's it. Okay. <laughs> the average. Um, All the cool uh, kids get that. Yeah. Screw the cool kids. Anyway, um, and can I also do an action action surge? Uh, that is another bonus action. Um, you can, I think, take another bonus action as your action, but then you're done. Well, no, actually, that wouldn't make any sense because then you would burn an action just to have another action. No. So no. <laughs> well, you can take an action. <laughs> You know, you've, so, got a, you've got an action and you've got a reaction. But uh, that action surge isn't triggered by a reaction. I'm just coming. Oh, okay. Is the second wind triggered by an is it like a reaction or no? That's a that's a bonus action. So you have an action left, and I think you still have some movement. Uh, okay. Well, hackety hack. Twenty five. Nice. Oh, that'll hit, and you do 12 points of damage? Uh-huh. What are you using? Uh, my uh, sword. My awesome. Damage, sword. damage goes right through. All right. And if I, if I still have some movement left? Yep. What, James? Uh-huh. My damage goes right through? Do you mean, like... Uh, he only has ballistic armor, so a sword is not ballistic. Unless there's a new sort of sword that... No, I just didn't know if you meant like 
he was out of phase with this reality and the sword. <laughs> That's a cool idea. I'm stealing that right now. No. <laughs> but actually, Mike, he is going to swing one of his robot arms at you as you move because it's an attack of opportunity. <laughs> robot arms. They're so fun. We love robot arms. Wait, he's swinging at me? No, he's swinging at Dirk. Oh, okay. He even sings his robot arm song. <laughs> uh, he misses? <laughs> Don't worry, this one's only 12d6. No, I'm just kidding. Oh my god. Take three points, you wee crybaby. Four. four points. Oh, four points. Do you take three if you really want to? I know, right? Dr. Dirty. Hmm. Um... Dr. Dirty is going to heal himself so he doesn't die. Um, oh, this one. Hey, that's good. All right, do you have a bonus action? Oh, oh went too high. Um, okay, um... Do I have a bonus action? No. Why? Okay, then. No, uh, I'm good. All right, Greg, you just gonna stay where you're at. You're a god. You say um, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna move over here since. Okay. I'm yeah. lucky. He already got his thingy off. So. Yep. <laughs> that sounds perverse, but sure. <laughs> uh, Caitlin. All right. Um. So he's already got his thingy off, so <laughs> no worries on that. Hi, Caramba. Uh, <laughs> that's one. That's two. How bad is our friend Dirk? Is he beat up pretty badly? Yeah. All right. I am going to uh, attempt to, to heal Mr. Dirk here. Um, let me see what I need to do again with healing. I think it's a just a roll. Hang on one second. Blah blah blah. Hacker healing. Uh, it is one d eight plus my tech ability modifier. So d eight plus two healing to uh, the guy that took the bullets. Let me roll d eight plus two. Whoops. I meant to be a plus two. Let me try that again. <laughs> I am uh, done rolling. <laughs> That's like the cool breeze of healing. All right. I don't know what I'm doing. She, she goes into her pack. She pulls a little unicorn band-aid, puts it on one of his wounds. <laughs> Here you go, sugar. This will help you. I only have enough band-aids for half your bolo wounds. <laughs> you gonna you gonna meet Mr. Um, Metal Skellington? I run up to this guy, and I. Slap my well. No, I'll stab him with my katana. All but right. I guess I slash with my katana. Oh, that'll hit. And that nine does. damage. And I've got a little more move, so I'll move over here because my thought is I would like to eventually. Stick my C4 on him if he doesn't die this turn. <laughs> oh, man. Don't we All need right. that C4? Well, if it's on him, it's still going to blow something up in this building. Yeah, but so, do we need to be strategic about where we placed him? He take, so basically, he does this. He, puts, he takes his arm that's facing Keela and shoots and then walks in the room and is going to shoot at uh uh let's see um <clears throat> so when he walks through into the room the uh -huh. reason i put myself where i am is so i can whack him as he comes in 
Okay, like, the attack of opportunity? opportunity? Yeah. Okay, so let's see if he hits Keela first. No, he's not going to hit me. Wow. That <laughs> Yeah, but are you gonna hit? Yeah, but are you gonna hit? Are you gonna hit him? Yeah, Dirk, go ahead. No, I mean Keela. As he walks away from her. Oh yeah, he went oh, yeah. out of my. Uh, so yeah, attack of opportunity. To him, yeah. Seven damage. All right, and um, Dirk. How come I? <clears throat> wow. So basically, before it even gets its other action. You disable it. Woohoo! Sweet. That's what we like. Nice. Uh, all right. right. You know, you know. Give me a high five, but it probably would hurt me too much. All right, you nightingales. Here you right go. Out of this building. What'd you ask? I'm sorry. I did, there was a whoop of uh, dice rolling. Who? No, what did you say? Me? Yeah. I was telling the nightingales to run out of the building. The, um, so this one complies. This one oh, kind of. Yeah, go in the loading dock and go in the back of one of the trucks and we'll get you over there. This one just kind of looks at you and tweaks a bit and. You will. Just says, I'm, I'm not a nightingale. I am a, I, I am an accountant. <laughs> we'll comply. I look at him and I say, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a she. It's it's a she and she you know she looks she comes up and grabs you and goes, How dare you misgender me and then runs away. <laughs> all right. Anyway, um all right, we're done with that that little lovely combat. I'm okay. going to see if the robots have any sensors or um, like fingers that are shaped like keys. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Uh, no fingers that are shaped like keys. However, you do see that like in their internal skeleton structure, they do have like a blinking red light going, both of them. Get away from them. They're about to explode. Uh, I run okay. out of um, uh, Caitlin, give me, uh, uh, I don't know. Give me an, int um, let's see. Uh, what, what saves you? You have will ref and, uh, mind, my mind. Uh, uh, mind is, yeah. Mind is my, uh, is my preferred, but fortitude reflex and mind are the three. All right. Hold on. Let me. Let me hit the old skill list so I can know what to have you roll. Uh, do, 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 um, That sounds ominous. <laughs> yeah. Give me, give me an intelligence check. Okie dokie. Or technology, whatever higher. Let's see. Uh, here's my tech roll. I got an 18. An 18. All right. Um, yeah, those those little red things aren't particularly bombs. Uh, they're basically sending distress to local law enforcement. Uh oh. <clears throat> um, I say the jig is up. The alarm has been triggered. I say that over the comp link. I assume that we all have connected and we're yeah. all talking to. Well, you're also all in the same vicinity, too. So it's a little hard to. Time to start playing bombs. All right. Get out. Okay. I'm going to open the door. All right. Um, this door opens fairly easy. When you come in, uh, there's a couple of technicians in here working on a couple of synths that are not decommissioned, but are. Um, you know, out of whack or broken. Oh, let me draw the little reveal area thing here. And they look at you and like, hey, whoa. Who are you? Are they people? <laughs> yeah, they're they're people. <laughs> I 
But then again, so is Soylent like Green, so, you know. I, yeah. I look at them and I say, get out now! It's danger! <laughs> you don't have to tell us twice. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Are you planting any bombs in these areas here? What's this thing in the middle here? Uh, that's a table, and there's actually a synth on it, like a broken synth. Uh, what's this? A locker. Ooh, does it open? <laughs> yeah. It has various odd-looking blue liquids and tools that you would use to fix a synth. Oh, I, I don't know. I guess I don't need them. <laughs> I can't turn my character, and it's frustrating me. Aha! Sure. Yeah, I know. When you when you get just at the you got to get just the right place to not click on the button. Yeah, I had to shrink it to make it be able to work. So while she's uh, contemplating um, looting the lockers, I'm going to uh -huh. try and open this other door. With the one right here. Yep. That opens fairly easy. And inside is revealed. A uh, bathroom. Oh, oops. Oh. Well, hold on. I'll do it again. A bathroom. Ta -da! Why isn't nope. it doing anything? <laughs> a bathroom. A bathroom. <laughs> Ta -da. All right. Oh, All for you, Doctor Dirty. Are you exploring this store down here? Um. Well, can can it open? Yeah. Okay, I'll try to open it. And it's a bathroom. <laughs> Maybe I'll uh, drop my C4 down the toilet. Okay, I'm going to go back this way. <laughs> Is this a foot locker, James? Uh, here, yeah, it's basically a locker. Okay, so... Uh, James, while, uh, while uh, Dirk is examining the bathroom, uh, I'm going to uh -huh. uh, another healing on him to see if I can uh, bring his hit points up a little more than the four I gave him. So, Okie okay, dokie. Okay. You saw, the other he you saw the other healing I did, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, how much are you down now, uh, Matt? Are you still pretty banged up? Nah, not too bad. Um, without getting all metagamey, I'm uh, eh, quarter. Quarter right. down. So, dang it, John. Ah, so, so, are you are you looking in that foot locker? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's, a, there's like VR goggles in there. There's various. I'm taking bits. some of those. Okay. And jumpsuits and things that like a technician would wear or need, like little flashlight wristbands and. Nice. All right. So the last roll I made, uh, Matt, is the one you should take. Seven. Seven okay. points. Yep. One d eight plus two. All right. Dirk, I, are you? Are you? I'm all door? good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna open the next door. All There's right. There's like a like a hospital gurney on that the half alive guys on. Um, wait, we um, it's not a host, it's more of a like an operation operating table, hmm. so it's not mobile, no, okay. Um, all right, so a couple things happen again because we're all having fun. Um, <laughs> so Matt, you open the door, uh -huh. and uh, I close the door. <laughs> He's bigger than the other ones. Yeah, this guy is huge. Yeah. And you see a bunch of synths basically lying in their little synth chambers here. Are these like grow chambers? No, they're actual real synths. They're kind of think of like Borg cubes. Not Borg cubes, but like those Borg regeneration things, pods. Yeah. 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 Oh, crap. They're battery packs. But there are actually synths in it. They're probably resting or sleeping or being re-energized but you close the door sure uh i'm gonna i'm gonna have us roll for initiative okay um rolling for initiative i'll roll for initiative then all this bathroom talk. all right you want to are you saying you want to break there keila i'm just saying i'm gonna run to the bathroom quickly I'll okay be right. well we can we can take a quick break you want to everyone take a like a five minute yeah, I could use a fresh drink. Okay, cool. We will take a five-minute break, and we will be back. 
after these words from our sponsor. Yep.
and we are back all right i think we're back we should be back hopefully there we are yeah, we're back. Back. all right so i believe where we left our our heroes was um well dirk opened the door to a room found the rest of the synths that were in there at least in you know in this pretty this section and there was a giant guardian robot in the room uh dirk closed the door very quickly and we rolled for initiative i don't think everyone's finished rolling for initiative yet though uh no i still need to roll uh, i'll do that right now so uh, i stepped off to the side of the door by the way hey. okay and the door is closed by the way so james can you scroll in more on the screen for those watching at home sure There we go. All right, and let's go ahead and do the magic shuffle. And Keela, looks like you are first again. Da -da. All right. Um. So this guy is bigger and badder. Yep. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, I'll come here. All right, so you go through the door and you run up to confront it. And I, uh, I kill it a lot. <laughs> it's good knowing you. Oh, yeah. But I get to do right. extra damages because I got a crit, right? Um, yeah, uh, so it's double damage. So nice. roll another D8. And and this system it. also doubles your proficiency bonus. Oh, okay. Wah, wah, wah. So you got two ones for damage. So that's 14 damage. All right. Did you add in your proficiency again? That was adding it in again. Okay. 12 plus 2. Yep. All right. So, yeah, you, you slice into it, and it looks at you with its beady red eyes. And um, does it have two, or does it have one that goes across like a Cylon Raider? <laughs> uh, it, it has two. It looks very Terminator-ish. Mm. Except this one has a blade on one arm and and a um, like a almost a like a cannon on the other. Oh boy! I say to him, I never saw your damn movie. <laughs> 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 All right. And it, po it points its cannon at you and shoots and gets a 19. Whoa. That usually hits me. All right. If you have ballistic armor, then at least you can subtract. I believe I do. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. I, have oh. DR, I have ballistic DR2. All right. So you only take 12 points of damage. Barf. Only. Ouch. All the cool kids are taking damage. Yeah, they are. And it doesn't move out of your threatened range, but it's moving here. All right. Uh, that brings us to Dr. Dirty. So you heard boom on the other side of the door. And then you heard boom. <laughs> okay. Akira. Kaneda. I will move in front of Caitlin and open the door. And I can see it from there. Um, yeah, you can actually, from where you're standing, you can see it. Okay, then we will. Uh, can I see her? Is she. Uh, she's hurt. Does it look like she's hurt? Um, Keela, do you look like you're hurt? I would, um, did, I would imagine the scream and the tears running down my face would indicate, as well as all the blood all over me, that I am hurt. Oh, with a touch. Damn it, son of a monkey. <laughs> um, to... Again with the monkeys. Yeah, 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 fine. Can I touch her? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. 
Get her consent for it. <laughs> the family show. Yes, that's what I was asking for. Can I reach her with a touch tack over one of those bed things? Yeah, you probably could. Okay, I'll move inside. Well, apparently these days, if it's a Netflix show, consent isn't even like a thing to worry about. And we will do this. Boop. Healing Kila. Sounds like a that sounds like a Netflix show. Yeah, right. Um, you get six. Great, thank you. Kila and the bee. All right, Caitlin. Um, boy, ten or five. Looks pretty crowded in there. Uh, I can um, move past my comrades, but if I move past the killer murder bot, he gets an attack opportunity on me, right? Only if you, um, only if you move way past him. Yeah. So... Is that legit? Yep. Okay. Murder, death, kill. Too, too legit to quit. I am uh, going to take my sawed-off shotgun and place it at the base of his spinal cord and pull the trigger. Oh, that's always fun. Um, Do we have any molten uh, metal? I have a pipe. I have a pipe bomb that I made in the motel. Is that going to work? <laughs> <laughs> It'll only blow his legs off. Oh, damn it! Um, so. James, uh, my my shotgun is currently loaded with incendiary shells. So I am. Oh working. wow! Okay. So I am firing my sawed-off shotgun with incendiary shells. Boom! And I get a five. Wow. Oh, at least you didn't get a one. Wait, how would you roll? You, got you did roll a one. Oh no, you didn't. Okay. Did that was get one for damage. Please? So uh, the moral of the story is I didn't even hit his legs. You actually, um, you probably, well, you didn't roll a one, so I'm not going to, it just basically shoots into the floor. Cool. All right. Uh, that would make me done. Dirk. Uh, he doesn't get advantage, huh? For, does he have, uh, but He's the thing is flanking the th and. But the, th well, there's no flanking and the thing is it saw him go by. It's all right. It's ongoing and all seen. Hacky slash, hacky slash. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. All right, that's not bad. That'll hit. Yeah, that'll hit. All right. And uh, I have um, an action surge. Uh huh. You've been uh, saving which, that up. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Uh, which allows me to take one additional action. So mm -hmm. I'm going to hacky flash him again. Kill him good. Did I kill him good? Wow. Same. Wow. Oh. Oh, that twin rolls, Batman. Uh, you did not kill him good, but he, as they say in D&D &D 4th edition, he's bloodied. <laughs> Never speak of that game. Keela. <laughs> All right, here I come to slash away. That'll hit. You're everyone's like elevening damage in him to to death. So that's a twenty damage. Wow. Um, it is it is definitely popping and sizzling at this point, <laughs> or popping and locking. You know, it's doing that cool. 80s Pop dancing. All right. And it's its turn. So it is going to basically use its blade arm on Dirk. Uh oh. Hi, Perry. What a 22. <laughs> and uh, the Parried wonderful. With my face. <laughs> you parried with your face. Actually, well, I mean, it, it does. 12 points. Ouch. And then it points its weapon at um, 
Uh, let's see. Let's, yeah, un unfortunately, its other arm is probably going to go towards Keela. Distraction. You have that ability? Yep. All right. Was it a disadvantage? Yep, disadvantage again. All right. So disadvantage. And we're looking at... Um, Yeah, yeah. Wow, it gets a a zero. What's that? I don't even know what the zero is about, but it gets a twelve, which I, th I believe misses you. And yeah, but you rolled a d ten plus three. Oh no, I just see. The, I don't even know what I'm seeing anymore. Yeah, I don't I don't even know what. The, oh, that's the that's the roll. Yeah, it beats me. All right, moving on. Uh, Doctor Dirty. The 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 mask is a little fucked up when there's no number in there because it's 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 the dice plus nothing plus three. So because there's plus nothing in there, it kind of messes up. Um, I will right, we'll try to shoot him. Fourteen. Fourteen is going to hit exactly. Oh, seven. All right. Yeah, it's it's not. You're basically all like beating up on it, so it's uh, it's not doing well. Caitlin. Uh, I'm going to attempt another attack with a sawed-off shotgun. These are regular rounds now. Um, I was looking, James, and it doesn't look like I need to spend a round to you to load the gun. It just I can fire it every round unless Okay. Uh, yep, so fire away. I get a fourteen. And it only had twelve left. So you blow it in half. All right. So are these synths completely brewed? Yeah, I mean they're they're basically just recharging in a sense. So it's I start working. popping them open and say, "You got to get out! You got to get out!" All right. Get the and, yeah, they get to the chopper. They um, they start running, and they'll say that down over here, which they'll go ahead and open a door for you. Um, there's another bathroom. I am going to put some. I'm going to put some C4 on top of one of these units. Okay. Hope that that helps explode. One, two. But we, this, we should have three more bombs left. Yeah, we so have. There, we have so there's ten more synths and number three. Okay. Um, and basically, since that are run, they go and get them. So basically, this, this hallway here um, is basically flooded with synths running towards the. Uh, All right, I'll the go in here. Get in the back of the truck. Okay, what is uh, this? Another bathroom. This is actually kind of a high tech. This is where they basically bring in um, like synths to figure out if they need to be fixed or basically reconditioned or. Um, disact deactivated. Oh so no, no, not not room number three. The room that's directly right. across from room number six. Oh, okay. This. It is the most important room of all in this building. It's the so unisex there's... bathroom. It is the yeah. It's the gender neutral bathroom. <laughs> Why isn't it working? The storage closet. <laughs> there we are. Ta -da. Ta -da. Okay, last hallway. Uh, James, are there synths in the boxes here? Um, there they were all in chairs, but they've all gotten up to run out. Okay. Uh, James. Yes. This guy had oh. a heavy-duty gun on him, right? Yeah, it's built onto his arm, though. Yeah, but can, do I think I can remove the arm and take it with me? Yeah, you probably you won't be able to use it, but you definitely would well, be able to. Not yet, but can I eventually? 
Yeah, yeah, you can probably reconfigure it into something. That's what I'm gonna do. All right, this is it's empty. This is like a, a work office thing, and you can now hear sirens uh, off in the distance. Time to go. And, and you okay, have about about like ten more minutes before the bombs go. Time to go. Okay. What's in here? That's the bathroom. Bathroom. It, it is bathroom. the second most important thing of all. It is another bathroom. Executive bathroom. Executive bathroom. That is a lot of bathrooms in this area. Yeah. Um, oh, group I, will put my, I will put my bomb directly on the seven. All right. Okay. And then we'll go all the way back. Since there's no way to get into that little bottom area. I'm just going to oh. vaporize through the walls over to here. That should be, what is that, a one, two, three, four. We should have one more bomb left. That would be mine. Where, Where are you going to put it? You can put it on one of these little robots. Yeah, put them on one of little arm robots. All right, I'll put it on that one. Okay. And I'm going to get in the passenger seat of the truck. All right. So it's kind of almost like you're you're basically smuggling illegals into the country, as you they have a tr breathe. a tr huh? They well they do breathe, but do they have to? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Do synths have to breathe? Yeah, uh, I believe they do. I believe that they there is organics in their body that requires them to have oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> That they because that's when they turn their organics into pet chow. When um, right, I was just making sure that I could, uh, uh, I had to make sure there was air for them in the back of the truck. All right, who is driving this thing? Make me a roll. Hey, nope. James, can I steal this blue car? What's that? Can uh, yeah, this? make me a um, make me a hacking or uh -huh. or uh, let's see. Well, don't forget, we also got the black. We got that black van that we came in. Yeah, you guys also have a black van too. Yeah, that's okay. All right, so I'll be piling into the black van wherever that is. Yeah, so go ahead and make. All right, I'll go in um, that. Uh, well, I'll I'll drive that. Well, well, I'm driving that. Can you hack the gate? Wait, somebody better see what's behind this door. Oh, okay. I'll see what's For behind symmetry. This door. James? And it's there's the another metal important guy. room at all. Is it another bathroom? Nope. No. Freaking all right. Right. Okay. All right. So, uh, Matt, make me a hacking roll. Okay. Yeah, I thought you were going to pick something else, but okay. And for the love of God, get rid of that bomb. All right. So, yeah. There so, you can, you can basically get I'm into the far. thing. And everyone, go ahead and make me a successful vehicle's land roll. I don't want to make it successful. Well, mm. woo, woo, twenty. Hey, come hey. on, Dirk, fail this one. No. I got a oh, who else? Who didn't roll? Caitlin got an eight. Well, there's only three drivers. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm kind of confused I... why I'm rolling. Am I? You're not. You're hacking. I'm hacking. Okay, I can do that. All right, so I'll drive all right, the big so, truck. Um, all right, so basically, nice Caitlin, uh, the black van is going. Uh oh! You're having a hard. You're having a hard time. I wasted my twenty-four. Oh. All right, so. Um, what are you gonna What are you gonna do? The car's not starting, and you know this is gonna go any minute now, any second. Um, I pull up next to you and I say, "Come with me if you want to live." I will jump into the car that is currently running. That sounds like a good idea. All right, and you guys take off basically just as the cops are like basically flying in and their their um their ultralux police cars, and um. This whole complex just completely goes boom. Crack and tell. I mean, to the point where, like, the windows shatter on your car as you're driving off. Wow. Cool. I am going to bring the big white truck with all these synths. Uh huh. The Nightingale. Okay. What is, James, what is this? Beirut? 
<laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, no. Too soon? <laughs> Too soon. All right. So, anyway, you um, you actually can uh, can bring it over to uh, Mr. Tanaka's shop, Uncle Tanaka's. We have uh, can Caitlin check and make sure there's like no tracking devices on this thing. I don't want to be followed. Right. Uh, I well, I rolled a hacking roll of nineteen. I don't know what I was rolling for, but let me know. If yeah, I oh, you can no. use that. That's fine. Yeah, you're you're good. <sighs> So, right, so we have no tracking devices on it. I park on in front of Tanaka's. Uh huh. And I go knock on the door. All right, Mr. Tanaka opens the door, and uh, he's uh, you know he's he's like, you, I I heard the boom from here. Uh, congratulations. Congratulations to you too. I have a truckload of synths for you. Bring them around back, he says. All right, I'll go bring the truck around back. You're not going to... Is he meeting me back there? He is. He's not just like, I'll just bring him back. There's a dumpster back there. Just, you know, they can make a shanty town. I, I say, these all seem to be in good condition, except for one accountant who seems to be tweaking a little bit. I'm an accountant. You cannot put down coffee as a deductible. <laughs> All right, so they they basically kind of filter themselves in. Um, Billy O'Shea meets you at uh, Tanaka's. I thought he got blown up. No, no we couldn't. I, I figured he was in the truck with uh, Kayla. So. Yeah, no, he was gone when you guys got there. But anyway, um, so after uh, after the, the basically you get the synths into the building itself, uh, it's a pretty. It's honestly, it's a pretty. It's almost like a, a repurposed warehouse. Um, you're brought back up with Tanaka uh, to Nightingale, who looks a little better. Um, Willie's not there, but it looks like there was some more patchwork. And uh, Nightingale speaks to you, and uh, she's like, well, you've done a great service to what will become um, the Synth Liberation Front. Uh, this we, <laughs> the, uh, the code that you put in uh, basically unlocked the slave mentality of the Synths at that reclamation center. Um, we are going to basically... Uh, repur we're going to basically send the synths that are here uh, to various parts of the city and out of the city to be kind of to become eyes and ears for ourselves. Uh, you are welcome to also use uh, Tanaka's shop and Tanaka smiles and bows uh, as a base of operations. Like I said, there wasn't much that I could have offered you cash wise, but you have. Uh, the full backing of the Synth Liberation Front at your disposal. And whatever one, we can do. I, for one, welcome our Synth Overlords. <laughs> 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 and are you carrying your, your robot arm with you? Oh, yeah. Tanaka looks at that and says, oh, I can definitely help you do something with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, I ask Nightingale, are you getting better? She says, "I am." Uh, Tanaka has been able to, with uh, with Willie's help, um, make some changes to my code and also fix parts of my body. Um, all of us are going to overgo a um, a skin change, as it were, and reacclimate ourselves into the world as uh, basically agents. Oh, what are you plan? Are you gonna overthrow uh, Vindaloo? That is our first goal. But you struck a mighty blow by blowing up that reclamation center. It's that that had a lot of expensive equipment, and they are crippled for now. But uh, they're definitely going to try to rebuild, and that's where we're going to try to stop them. And how are you planning on 
de-slave chipping other synths. Well, you already proved the code can work. So now we can just send our agents into the places where synths are being held and oppressed and uh, get that code into their mainframes. It's a long process, but Good we'll, luck. we'll get it done. But like I said, you we, we owe you a huge debt. Uh, Tanaka has said that you can that use his building as a base of operations and whatever resources you need from us in the future, um, you have them. Tell your friends to hire Team Us. <laughs> what, a, what a creative name. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. And basically the the screen goes fuzzy and pixelates and then goes out and we are done. Yay! Like I said, it was a a very short session to finish up. So, um, so I just want to know, what did everyone think of Carbon 2185? I mean, as far as uh, the mechanics of it being close to 5e or just the feel of it, I liked it better than Shadowrun 6th edition. And I have, <laughs> I have to say that because unfortunately 6th edition left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. But it seems pretty smooth. It looks like the rules, you know, work pretty well. I think they captured the the, the whole cyberpunk feel. Um, I mean, there's there's some minor stuff that... Uh, that I don't know. It, it's hard to describe. It's like it's it's cyberpunk, but it still has a lot of that D and D overtone to it. I, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, but overall, uh, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it wasn't a bad system. All right. Anyone like, else? Anything better than Chad? I laughed. I cried. It was better than cats. I would say. So go ahead. To the five E rules made it a lot easier to play yes to just pick it up and play since we all know those rules so well yeah and then of course we had greg to point out when anything was different <laughs> yeah the only thing that really got me was the uh was the when you create you double your proficiency bonus as well that was just a little just a little <laughs> it, it it you're not used to it from normal 5e so you don't normally think of that so it's one of those things you have to actually remember. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, I, I, I really liked it. Honestly, I was so impressed by the layout, the artwork, and the rules that after I bought the PDF, I actually just ordered a hard copy of it. And, you know, and definitely it's something I'm going to keep. I'll probably run again at a convention or just, you know, randomly if it's kind of one of those, hey, I want to run something at a game day sort of games. But it's definitely worth get, at least get the PDF. It's definitely worth getting. Um, I wasn't too happy with the modules that came out with it. So interlinked, and then there's a, another series uh, for it, Unhackable, that I really just didn't um, quite care for. I think the writing is very lazy, and it so compared to like if you look at some of the modules for the Cyberpunk 2020 RPG. Um, those were actually pretty intense, uh, really well written and kind of had a cyberpunk feel where these just kind of felt like cyber dungeon with, I don't know, it just didn't feel very challenging as a GM. I kind of had to like change a couple of things to make it even remotely like workable. But, um, but as far as the system goes, I think it's great as far as like the, the modules and stuff they have for it so far, I wouldn't quite recommend. So I and to, to touch upon that point, I think that's what I meant by D and D is in some aspects of it kind of felt like a copy paste of D and D. And I don't want to insult the writers, I don't want to insult the designers, but but yeah, there were certain elements that literally felt like they just swapped out the swords and put in, you know, guns. And they said, There we go, we have a carbon twenty one eighty five. So. Although I felt that it was kind of neat that they took like hackers and kind of made them clerics in a way. Yeah, the healing aspect was an interesting part that I wouldn't have anticipated. I yeah, thought that was pretty cool. And you know, I'm not really a full blown healer like uh, Greg's character was. I was kind of like 
an auxiliary, like a, I don't know, like a druid, I guess, or a, or a, a paladin, somebody who kind of can heal, but isn't the dedicated healer. Or bard, maybe. You're, yeah, bard. sure. That's probably closer to the truth, bard. Yeah. Except, you're not, except you're not trying to seduce everything. <laughs> I'm trying oh, to yeah. seduce computers, man. Seduce the computers. That's just the character that Mike played. I mean, I'm sure that he could have been a, a seducer. <laughs> Uh-huh. It seemed to me that the guns might have been a little too gunny, like too a little overpowered. Yeah, uh, but I mean, also too, it's cyberpunk is supposed to be kind of deadly as well. So I mean, guns are yeah. supposed to be fairly lethal. Yeah, it just seemed like from you know. If you were trying to do a longer campaign, I don't think it had uh, in the gear that much ramp up because, I mean, the most expensive stuff were like some vehicles, but you could get some of the better armor with the starting cash practically. Yeah, if you're, if you're, if you're lucky with your roles during the, the career phase. Yeah. You you can get a good amount of cash. Uh, my character would have liked to have a uh, a sniper rifle, but that, there was no way that that was going to happen price wise. Yeah, so that's the thing too. Pricing for certain things are a little kind of off and weird, but you know it's also the setting too. I mean, I would love to repurpose this and just not use the the core setting and then just use this for something like homebrew setting or, uh, or just like maybe run one of the 2020 modules with it just to kind of see how it goes. But yeah, the core, I mean, I, I, believe me, I love the book. The setting's really cool. I like the ideas behind it, but I just feel like some of the, the economics behind it are a little wonky, but and not, not horrible. Um, yeah. And Sh- Shadowrun six edition, I was just thinking like, Fatal is probably a better game than Cyberpunk Sixth Edition at this point. I, I can't even think of what what un- unplayable game that uh... Cyberpunk or Shadowrun. I'm sorry, Shadowrun Sixth Edition. Yeah, but uh... well, what was it? Three times that I during character creation when I said people do this for fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so James. Do you want to give all of our loving fans an update on what's going to be coming up? Yeah, actually, um, let's go ahead and go to to Mike. Uh, So, yeah, so as of next session, I'm going to be stepping down as Game Master, and Mike is actually going to be taking us through a very lengthy campaign. So, Mike, you want to talk a little bit about it? No pressure. Sure. Sure. So, um... With uh, with much fanfare, uh, I am going to be running the fifth edition uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, Curse of Strahd. I will be, uh, for the most part, running the adventure as is, as it is written, but of course, I'm going to be putting my own personal touches on it as well. So uh, there'll definitely be some surprises and maybe some uh, interesting events that uh, you wouldn't expect if you've seen the adventure before or if you've played through the adventure. So I hope. Anybody watching uh, would be interested enough to drop in and see when we start playing, which hopefully should be, uh, first game should be September 4th, I believe. Yeah, uh, two weeks. And uh, we'll week. probably be playing that until everyone gets bored or until Strahd kills everybody. I, I don't know yet. Well, or maybe everyone gets bored and then Strahd kills you all. I, I'm you not have sure. no faith in us. <laughs> I'm running for Strahd. Oh, okay. So- so like what you're saying is, then you kill him. what you're saying is, this game is going to last three sessions, and then he's going to kill us. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Unless he gets impatient. Anyway, uh, I hope uh, I hope our uh, people watching are are their interest is peaked, and they'll be willing to uh, drop in and see the next uh, game uh, coming up, the uh, Curse of Strahd. No, Evelyn. And no. you know what also kind of makes the game cool is if you add in like. 70s guest stars like from the Batman 66 show where you know <laughs> it's like Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> yeah. Although isn't he dead? Uh, ooh, ooh. 
Can we get Charo? Charo, please. What's that? Scott was able to raise him from the dead, so he's now a uh, vampire spawn or a zombie. I'm not sure which. So. Is Charo still alive? Yes. Really? Wow. So, uh, she, there there you, you go. Are. Guest star. Is there a top secret coming up on Show Us Your Crits? Um, we do not have a top secret as of yet. Oh my god, Charo no longer has a nose. Oh. Hold on. I have to... You're going to uh, show us that Charo no longer has a nose? Well, it's always been like that. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, wow. I, 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 I don't think she always had a singularity in the center of her face, though. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, she went well, thanks, guys. Now, yeah. now we're not going to get her as a guest star. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Sharks driving through the Tower of London. That's even cooler. <laughs> That's Charo's next movie. All right. <laughs> All right. So anyway, we will uh, we'll go back to us here and leave poor Charo alone. But um, yeah, that's... Uh, I don't know. Guest stars are always fun. So yeah, Mike, if you can get Charo... That I'll, just... um, yeah, I'll see what I can do. Coochie, coochie. <laughs> <laughs> I might have, you might have to settle for a pizza from Sabaro. I don't think I might get be able to get yeah. there. So. All right. So Jonathan, yeah, I, I know I was supposed to set up something with Pete at some point. I just don't know when that was set for. So, um, yeah, we should be having a, a top secret, uh, thing coming up soon. So and uh, I think I played this for the um, for the group, uh, the Deadlands group. But I'll just give everyone a preview of the cool opening for Top Secret. So yeah, yeah that is our cool. that is our opening cool. for Top Secret. Yeah, so Pete Bryant, who is um, Mythwits and uh, also uh, works for TSR Games as well, uh, is kind of producing it. Um, I'm the administrator, game master, and then um, one of uh, our writers is a uh, Scott Congable, who is uh, a pretty amazing writer, and he's done a lot. He's doing a lot of stuff for us as far as uh, creating a pretty awesome book for top secret new world order that should be out at some point, but uh, also, uh, huh? You better, if, if, uh, it's really supposed to be the end of this month. You better yeah. Well, it. yeah. So yeah, we understand. Um, and, uh, that's, I guess really about it. So I want to go ahead and give the shill here of, hang on, Mike, just to verify, uh, when we start Curse of Strahd, it's still going to be at starting at 8.30? Uh, yes, nor, uh, we're going to start at 8.30, and that way it'll give everybody an opportunity to get ready to play because 8 o'clock, I think, is just it doesn't uh, allow everybody enough time to, to set up. So I thought 8.30 would be better, and that way everyone has an opportunity to get everything they need and all their snacks in order to start playing. All right, because I'm uh, posting it on my Facebook uh, for, with a link for everybody to anybody who's interested to come yeah watch. definitely and yeah any of it just uh and any of you, jonathan or whoever just i'm gonna post it i want to do an ad on the show us your crits page on facebook and twitter and everything so we can get a nice viewership so don't don't feel pressured mike that <laughs> you know maybe well with our luck you know it's like thousands equals to like Four people, but you know, there are dozens the... of us, dozens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, back to my shill. Anyway, give us money. Um, <laughs> as, as I told people on at the date on the Deadland stream, is that we will spend this money on hats and small dogs that will sit on the hats to bark in various tones during the Deadlands game. No, 
I want cats to sit on hats. Oh. But you no, don't want. No. You if don't we want can't do that, unless you want. Can you? <laughs> If you, if you do that, you're going to get sued by the Seuss estate, and you don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> you just can't see him because he's the wrong color for that. All right. So anyway, uh, we're going to bid everyone a good night, and uh, we will see you in two weeks with the Curse of Strahd. Everyone else, stay on while we close out. Bye.